गुड इवनिंग कैनेडा वी आर बैक विद एपिसोड ऑफ वॉइस ऑफ कैनेडा आई एम योर होस्ट अस्वंत वाडीवाला माई को होस्ट इज सिंधी यंग वी हैव अ वेरी वेरी डायनेमिक एंड अ वेल नोन गेस्ट हुज द फॉर्मर एम पी एंड नाउ इज अ वार्ड इलेवन काउंसिलर फ्रॉम द सिटी ऑफ मिस सागा ऑनरेबल ब्रेड बट I still say honorable Brad. Bart. I know I was never honorable though. <laughs> no, I was, we I was never a cabinet you, minister. As a respect, so. I always anyway, tell you, thank you as Aspen. honorable Brad. Yeah, you've always been a great so, friend. Brad, so just uh, introduce very briefly uh, to our viewers of Voice of Canada. Just your name and that's all. Then we'll sure. come to the questions. Sure. So, Aspie, Cindy, thank you, uh, and Voice of Canada, thank you very much for inviting me to be with you tonight. Uh, I am Brad Bud. I am the current. Uh, Mississauga City Councilor for the Ward 11 area. Um, so I serve on both the City of Mississauga and Region Appeal Councils. We actually had Region Appeal Council meeting uh, today, where we deal with lots of issues that are local that uh, that you and I would be concerned about every Definitely. day in our communities. Uh, and prior to that, as as Aspie well said. I did serve one term as a federal member of parliament from 2011 to 2015. Fantastic job it did. In the same in the same area, Mississauga in, in, Street, in the Streetsville, the Greater Streetsville area, as I like to call it, and it's been a great honor to serve uh, the people at both the federal and now at the municipal level. No, it's fine. You are serving the people after all, in your capacity, and you are a hard worker. This is also we are oh, very happy that look, you. This is my neighborhood. I live here you like you do. I mean, I live here. I care about the and community. And even your and even your family has a history of serving the city. Yes. Your dad was a counselor. Yes, my dad was a counselor. Oh, yeah, he's my family. 1977 to 79. That's mm -hmm. a long so time ago. But you have uh, got a blood but political blood like do. me. We do. We do. Like you. That's right. Like you. A uh, very special welcome, Brad, to the uh, show, you, Voice of Canada. It's a pleasure meeting you and pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. So my question to you is that last October 2022, you were formally elected as a councillor for Ward 11 for our city of Mississauga. If you could please inform our viewers, um, what are your top priorities for Ward 11 that you plan to put in place? And at the same time, now as you informed us, you are a regional councillor as well. Yeah. So tell us what are your duties as regional councillor? Yeah. Well, I think there's a couple of different things. I mean, there's obviously the local priorities in your ward. Then there's the bigger issues the city and the region Definitely. have to face. So locally in Ward 11, I would say our biggest challenge is going to be development. Definitely. Um, people, uh, you know, people builders, they 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 want to build housing in Streetsville, and that's great. We need housing, and 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 we want that. Um, but there's going to be challenges mm. around uh, how do we. Make sure that that development fits properly uh, in a community that's kind of tight a little bit. I mean, Definitely. if if you know the, the village of Streets very well, you will know we only have Queen Street, which is an extension of Mississauga mm -hmm. Roads uh, North and South. It's only two lanes, and so if we're going to bring in new development, we have to make sure that it recognizes Recognize the fact that we have. You know those challenges around traffic and transportation. At the same time, the cost factor should also be in mind that every, for, it should be affordable for sure. But Ward 11 is also just beyond Streetsville as well. I mean, I, mm. there's Dairy Village West, there's Old Meadowvale Village, there's uh, other parts of the ward that have uh, you know individual challenges. So there'll be a lot of that at the city and region level. I'll, I'll be quite frank with you. I mean, our two big issues. Are keeping property taxes at a level at people can afford, level, yeah. and the second big issue is when the provincial government brought in Bill Twenty Three, mm -hmm. which is a major change to the Planning Act mm -hmm. and how planning and development happen in municipalities, and the fact that the, the province wants to build, you know, millions of new homes over the next ten years. Um, makes it very difficult yeah. for municipal councils, not just Mississauga, mm -hmm. all over Ontario, Every, to to respond to that. No one is against building new housing. We all know we need it. Yeah. It's how you do it in a responsible way and right. make sure taxpayers can afford it, and also that it fits into characters of communities. Definitely. That's absolutely. going to be our biggest biggest challenge. challenge. That's yeah. our yeah, biggest challenge. absolutely. Yeah, we see that. Uh, Brad, inform our viewers of Voice of Canada that 211, you had a landslide victory 
and you won as a member of parliament along with our prime minister Stephen Harper. But after four years, as soon as the Harper government went down, mm -hmm. you also, your hard work went into the drain. That was a political issue. But everybody, whoever, so, so many people met me after the elections. The bread was the deserving to win. I said, yeah, the things are different. That was, that was a political issue. Yeah. Well, Aspie, that's very kind of you. But I mean, listen, in, in federal and provincial politics, where we have political parties, parties. And I don't really care which party it is, mm -hmm. conservative, liberal, NDP, Green Party, it doesn't really matter. I mean, people generally vote in provincial and federal, federal elections for the party, for the party right. and for yeah. the party leader, that's right. the person that they believe mm -hmm. should be the prime minister prime or minister should be the, the country. Premier. And so all people who run for all the parties, um, they work hard. Um, they hope locally they'll get to support because of the great people mm -hmm. that they are. Um, I think most people put their name forward because they really care about our country, country yeah. our province, and our communities. Um, but in my case, I mean, yeah, I, I was fortunate in 2011 that people wanted, and I heard of the doors I was knocking on, People wanted Stephen Harper to have a majority government. They wanted a change from the MP that was in, in my riding at the time. Um, and four years later, they changed their <laughs> change minds their again. And that's fine because that's democracy. That's a democracy. And people have the right to right vote to that way and, and, and choose. Bring power. And, and that's fine. I mean, we dealt with it. I, I think it was unfortunate because I think... Um, of course, I'm a little bit biased there, but because I worked with Prime Minister Harper for mm. four and a half years in True. Ottawa, you know, I think Prime Minister Harper could have done a lot more okay. for our country mm. before he would have decided to retire. Mm. But unfortunately, retirement was thrust upon him, mm -hmm. upon as we call it, yeah. when you lose an election. Because he won and, about the uh, three terms. You know, there we go. And we elected Prime Minister Trudeau, and he's mm. still there today. And I mean, what we want is good government. Good we government. Want good, yeah, good governance, governance and yeah. good. And we want a prime minister who represents our country, country well. That's well, right. that's what we all want. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, Brad, during 2023, the city of Mississauga has increased 3% on property taxes yeah. and 2% on commercial industrial tax bill. Yeah. Why is there the difference of 1%? Um, and as you're aware, the current rate of inflation is pretty high. Our Bank of Canada has for the eighth time increased um, their rate as well. And it stands now at 4.4%. 4.5%. It's probably even 4.5% yeah. oh, yeah. now. Oh, yeah, the residents sure. of Mississauga are definitely, and I think everywhere, are finding it very difficult to manage their expenses. Um, so mortgage rates have also greatly increased. Can you explain to us and to our viewers the rate of increase of 3% on the property tax? was a bit, a bit stressful for us. Yeah. yeah you know, this was a very tough budget year. And of yeah. course, it was the first year that I've been a member of mm -hmm. Mississauga and Peel Regional Councils that deliberate the budget and, and then eventually set the tax rate mm -hmm. for both residential and taxpayers commercial. and, you know, commercial, uh, industrial, commercial taxpayers, business uh, taxpayers. Everybody talks about inflation today. Mm. Yeah. And guess what? Inflation affects municipalities yeah, just like it affects They're you strong. and me and our household budgets. Right. And if interest rates go up for your home or whatever, guess what? Interest yeah. rates go up on the money. Even municipalities borrow yeah. so Absolutely. that we can build capital infrastructure. Right. So we we had a really tough budget year. I I was hoping we were going to be to bring in a lower property tax rate uh, in 2023. Um, I actually moved a motion to to try and reduce it a little bit by reducing the infrastructure, what's known as the infrastructure levy, mm -hmm. which is part of your property tax uh, increase. Um, that motion failed. Other councillors voted against that, and that's fine. That's democracy. Mm -hmm. So we have what we have. Um, and one of the reasons why the, the rate, if you combine the city of Mississauga and region appeal, which if you live in Mississauga, um, you have two levels of municipal government and it's, it's a combined tax rate. It'll wind up being a little close to 5% at the end of the day. Um, 
-hmm. We suffered those same spending issues as sure. everybody else. Yes, everybody. And again, I, I think going forward, we're going to have to do a better job. And I've talked to some of my colleagues about this. Mm -hmm. You know, people can't afford that escalation, escalation. of property no, no, tax no, no, rates yeah. and still be able to live uh, in the city of Mississauga. So next year, I'm hoping we can kind of rejig a little bit. Mm -hmm. We can look at some things and think, OK, is this absolutely necessary to spend on? Yeah. What can we do both in the some city other, and the region? And you should be. Yeah. And so I will certainly be one of the counselors mm. looking at that. And I know my colleagues are concerned too. It's not just me and Mayor Crombie and others. Like we're all, yeah, all concerned, concerned about definitely, this, definitely. right? Yeah. So yeah. It, it, it is a challenge. Now, the other question you asked is why is the industrial commercial rate lower? lower. Mm -hmm. It's actually because of education taxes. And if your viewers mm. don't know how education taxes are done, a portion of your property tax bill is, education, also, is yeah. education to That's support right. our schools. Definitely. But it's controlled by the province. Uh -huh. The provincial government controls it. Right. So for commercial and industrial business taxpayers, 50% of their property tax bill is for education. Uh -huh. Actually, where, where for resident, re, residential, it's no, only 25%. So the reason why the education, mm -hmm. sorry, the ICI rate increases lower is because a smaller percentage of their overall tax bill right. is the city and the region. Mm -hmm. Where residential, 75% of your tax bill is the city and the region yeah, and only 25%. Uh, is education. It's it's a complicated formula. No, I know yeah, most people, yeah. they open up their envelope. Oh my God, here's the tax yeah. bill. Can I afford it? <laughs> and we get that. But, it, but that is how it's apportioned between businesses and residents. Residential. Oh, but Brad, that, the question yeah. why the residents of Mississauga stretched, that in the Peel region, Brampton is also there. Yeah. The city of Brampton. Yeah. And yeah. they were very kind enough that during pandemic, Two years, they did not raise, uh, raise a cent in the property taxes. Yep. How yep, did they, they did. manage? They also manage a council. They also yep. have a mayor. And so that, that is why the people, yep. that yep. common yep. man asked, even Brampton can do, why Mississauga cannot do? Yep. Why are, what our councillors yep. are doing? Yep. Well, I'll tell you what. Hmm. The same reason why Hazel McCallion freezed property taxes for 10 years when she was mm -hmm. mayor back in the 90s. See, that was because we had huge development levy money um, coming into the city. Guess what Brampton has now? Okay. Huge, huge development levy wow. money coming into their city because they're building major subdivisions yeah. all over the, all city, over of the Brampton. city of Brampton. So, so, so Patrick Brown mm -hmm. and, and, and Brampton Council are enjoying mm -hmm. the same thing same that thing. Mississauga like enjoyed in the past. 20 years ago. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right? the world's changed. However, our system in, in, in uh, Peel Region is we have three municipalities, mm -hmm. part of Peel Region, of course, Mississauga, then Brampton, and, and Callaghan as well. All three are somewhat diverse cities. They're different. Certainly, Caledon, and I'll get, get to that in a minute. Caledon is dependent on is, both is, is and Brampton. Wow. I tell you how much we subsidize Caledon. Mm. I'm sure the Caledon folks watching won't be happy. No, definitely. Me. But <laughs> that we all but, know. You know, here's the reality of when the Peel, when Peel Region was established in 1974. He, here's the reality. When Bill Davis set that up, God, God bless him, bless one of the him, best yeah, premiers a, we ever had. Brampton, for life. Brampton guy, Brampton, Brampton guy. guy yeah. It Brampton was, he <laughs> set up Peel Region for two reasons. One, growth management, management, which was smart. But number two was to get cities like Mississauga to kind of artificially support, mm -hmm. support cities like Brampton and Caledon that yeah. hadn't mm -hmm. been as highly in the past. developed That's right, in the past, so yeah. so taxpayers in mississauga still to this day we still subsidize taxpayers in brampton and caledon mm -hmm. at the regional service level because a lot of it is based on population, population. or what's also known as assessment base mm -hmm. so the value of all the properties in your municipality mm -hmm. and then there's a taxation on that again a little bit complicated, maybe for your viewers, and some day, some days, too complicated <laughs> for me. But the reality is, mm. Mississauga has been artificially subsidized, subsidized. in the region of Peel mm. since since it became the region in 1974, 1974. Wow. and 
there was there were reasons for that historically. We are where we are today in 2023. The province has indicated they're willing to relook at um, whether that model still, still works. Needs to happen. Right. We are recommending to the province they do that homework. Mm -hmm. We're willing to be a partner and talk to them about that and see. And of course, my job as a Mississauga councillor, awesome. even though I'm on Peel Region Council as well, is to get the best deal best for deal Mississauga. Best deal for the Mississauga, correct. Uh, uh, Brad, you inform our uh, viewers that since so many years, Mississauga is thinking of uh, getting divorced from the region of Peel. Yeah, yeah. Since the time of our late mayor, that talk is going on, but yeah. every year, no, but nothing happens because now is high time that the Mississauga should have its own funds utilized for its own projects and for its own people than giving subsidy mm -hmm. to other. What What is your personal opinion yeah. on separation well, from Peel? It, it, it's, it's kind of funny. I had to say this at a council meeting a number of years ago when Mayor McCallion was our mayor. Uh, I was actually one of the volunteer uh, co-chairs mm -hmm. of the Citizens Task Force uh, on uh, the future of Mississauga in 2000. And we, 2000, I think we finished our final report in 2002. And back then, we recommended that Mississauga should be a standalone municipality. Mm -hmm. And we actually did our homework, as Hazel would say. Do your homework. Do your homework. Yeah. Yeah. We did our homework on why... Mississauga could be a standalone municipality. Now, of course, that was 12 years ago when we did that report. But even back then, we were able to properly demonstrate ways in which Mississauga could operate as its own city. Own city. So that's so okay. That's 12 years ago. So here we are today. Do you know that the cities of Kingston, mm -hmm. Sudbury, London, mm -hmm. Ottawa? which is bigger than us, but not by much. Of course, Toronto, we all know, and, and many other cities across the province of Ontario are single-tier municipalities. They do not have an upper level of municipal government. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. make their own decisions, own decisions. Locally, And they all have populations less, less than, than the city of Mississauga. True. So why do we have a senior level of municipal yeah. government overseeing us and not, I wouldn't say telling us what to do, but having that full oversight. So we really don't call the shots at the end of the day. So Aspie, you asked about why has this been an ongoing thing? Well, successive provincial governments, liberal and conservative, I don't, it's not a partisan thing, were too chicken. Definitely. They were, they just didn't have the guts to take on the fact that it was time to end uh, a senior level of municipal government mm -hmm. in the Peel region, Peel region and allow Mississauga, Brampton, and Caledon, you know, to be on their own. On their own so yeah. here we are once okay. again back at the same thing where this current provincial government says there's too many municipalities. We agree. Yeah. We agree. So eliminate the senior level of, mm. of uh, municipal Make them government. Yeah. Mississauga is going to be a city of 875,000 yeah. people with within consensus. two years. Wow. Huge. Wow. Why would you need a senior level of municipal government to mm. oversee what you're doing? Now, I want to defend Peel Region and the services they provide. We are very fortunate with Peel Region government because they are excellent people. They are providing services. We talked about affordable housing today mm -hmm. at the region mm -hmm. and stuff we're investing in. That's important to people. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that what the region does uh, should be discounted or thrown off the bus or whatever. They do great work. But I think we can restructure municipal government mm -hmm. to still provide those services, but not have, in some cases, duplication but also not have confusion for the resident that just wants something solved. Oh, yeah. How many people know their garbage is collected by the region? The region, yeah. Right? Most people Mostly don't. don't but, know that. but the snow on your street is plowed yeah, by the city. The city. Right? Most people, they don't care. They, no. Mm. If it's, it's not done properly, just, they're phoning me. <laughs> that's right. Mm. Right? As they should. Yeah. 
But then again, I have to navigate two levels of municipal government to help mm -hmm. my constituents. Let's do insults. And I think, let, let's face it, we're 2023 now. I mean, enough's enough. It, it, it's time to move on. It's time to st streamline government, keep it simple, so that voters understand it, residents and businesses get it. They get one ta property tax bill that they can understand mm -hmm. from one level of government and move on. So we'll see how it goes. How it goes on. Mm -hmm. But that's my view. We'll be taking a short break and we'll be back with you soon. Welcome back after a short break in our show, weekly mm -hmm. talk show, Voice of Canada, with your host, mm -hmm. Aswandiyar Wadiwala, co-host Cindy Young. And our guest for this week is our well-known Brad Butt. Brad, uh, inform our viewers of Voice of Canada that since last two years, after the pandemic and during the pandemic, the crime rate has increased considerably in GTHA, yeah. all the cities yeah. of uh, uh, connected to Toronto. And that has become now a daily nuisance. We never used to hear about the carjacking, the gun vi violence, yeah. the house theft, yeah. the domestic violence, and so many things have cropped into, into our country like Canada. We, we immigrants came to Canada after burning all of our boats back home. Yeah. We were well off back mm -hmm. home. But we burnt it and we came to Canada for a better life. But now the same things are haunting us. Yeah. So what should yeah. be done yeah. to stop that? <laughs> Well, or decrease it. Well, ask me. You're you're 100 percent right, and this is a, a major issue I heard when I was door knocking in the fall, um, running uh, to be the new councillor uh, for Ward 11. Um, I mean, speeding and traffic mm -hmm. safety were a huge issue. Huge. However, I heard more about car theft, car theft carjacking, yeah. other stuff than I've ever heard before. Yeah. And as you know, I've been in politics yeah. a long time. I've knocked on a lot of doors. Yeah. And I didn't, but this time this I time did hear it, and I heard it a concerned. lot. Everything. I think we've got a couple of problems. And by the way, uh, our, our excellent Peel Police Chief, um, uh, Nish uh, Dureapa, is actually holding a summit on mm -hmm. March 10th mm -hmm. on the whole car theft issue, issue, right? So, which is good. He's bringing stakeholders in. He's bringing in the car industry. He's bringing in insurance. He's bringing in cities, other stakeholders mm -hmm. uh, that that need to be part of this greater discussion. The car theft problem, quite frankly, is just organized crime. Yeah. Organized crime. This isn't the yeah. kid down the street yeah. that's walking up, stealing your car, and going mm -hmm. for joyride. It's not. It's a well organized This is gang. a yeah. very Huge. well organized. Yeah. From what from what we're told as politicians, and how the I mean, cars I are shipped without any checking of documents or anything. But the and, and how they're getting that car. One police officer told me that there was a car that was stolen from a house and within four hours it was in a container at the port of Montreal yeah. from Mississauga. Oh, four hours wow. four hours in a container in the, container? In the port of Montreal wow, wow. off to some African country. Andrea, right? Ghana and Nigeria. Nigeria. Four hours. Four hours my God. Yeah, very right? organized. I don't know. Can you yeah. drive to Montreal in four hours? Not unless possible. you're speeding. I no. can't go anyway, four hours to Ottawa. Me, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you've come up to see me in Ottawa, <laughs> so I know. <laughs> but but I mean, you know, we can we can laugh about this in a good time. But this is very it's serious. serious. Very it's serious. a very serious and matter. It's a combination yeah. of things that have to happen. We have to have the car manufacturers in the room because there have to be the proper security system in these cars. That's what happens. I mean, yeah. obviously, there are car thefts that are smarter than the yeah, rest of us. Ahead of can walk everything. up, they yeah. can yeah. open, you know, they can fog your system or whatever it's called and open your yeah. car up and take it. Other times, they just smash the no, passenger the windows and, 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 and they steal the car. Um, but again, residents have to be smarter too. Yes. And, you know, I have this challenge with residents I talk to about their car being stolen, uh, you know, on a regular basis. And they have a two-car garage. Like, why yeah, yeah, isn't in your car in the and garage? And then most well, of them they don't the use. the garage is full of stuff. stuff and our uh, that's summer another equipment. reason. Well, you know, sometimes residents have to take some responsibility Everyone too. Everyone has to work together. With all right, them, sure. there's no excuse yeah. for your car getting stolen, stolen by a from criminal. The driving. All right, yeah. I'm not no. defending that. No one's defending that. But at the end of the day, like we have to do we our bit too. Also. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, right? but play our role and also. so when I have community yeah. meetings, and I have them quite often, and I get feedback, and I have organizations like Safe City Mississauga and others that want to set up neighborhood watches mm -hmm. and other things, you know, in all of our communities across the city of Mississauga, I mean, people need to participate, mm -hmm. right? Definitely and if you know you have too. a problem on your street, you got to speak up. Right. I had one lady in the election campaign say to me, mm -hmm. her car was stolen twice in six months. Oh, wow. Car was stolen. Got a new car mm -hmm. six months from the insurance company. From the insurance. Another Got another car stolen. Six, stolen again. That was well, why wasn't your car in the garage? Oh, well, I don't put my car in the garage. That is no I reason. Mean, I, That's a lame like, We can't have a police officer mm. sitting and on your driveway, your driveway 24 7. Obviously, there's a problem in your neighborhood, and you need to take some take proactive. Uh, action and as some well. precautions, yeah. I mean, we need to do stuff, and our police, the appeal police, need to do work. To, you know, we're all in this together. But sometimes I hear these stories and I go, well, maybe, you know, maybe there was a reason. Play with anything. We have to do what we, we can. We have to also play a role. The of, people have absolutely. to play a role, Probably. definite positive role, to um, curb the um, car um, uh, to jack um, it. Um, but, but don't don't make a mistake about this again. This is not the, the teenager no. down the street this from you. Very, no, it's a bit organized. This is very, very organized, organized crime. structured yes. crime. So I don't want I don't want no your viewers that. to think, oh my God, you know, this you know, you know, my neighbor's kid is gonna take my mm, that it, it does happen, to, but, but not, almost never. Never that's not what this, this is, is very oh, organized. Nice and kid. what the other thing is the, the the chief and others have said to us is these criminal gangs are recruiting 14, 15, 16 year olds. Wow. Because they're covered under the Youth Criminal Justice Act. Oh, right. So if they're caught stealing a car, mm -hmm. their penalty it's is way less. lower. Mm -hmm. Their identity is protected. It's one of the issues I actually worked on when I was a member of parliament was mm -hmm. to change that. Mm -hmm. But the current federal government decided that they wanted to keep those young offenders protected. Um, but that's what they're doing now. They're recruiting the young kids, promising wow. them thousands of dollars, dollars to do this. And if they are caught, then they're charged under that act yes. because they're under 16 mm -hmm. or under 18 in certain cases. And identity I mean, I, is also yeah. protected. And so anyway, I was, caught so there's some loopholes, as I would call them. We have and to some stuff the loopholes now. And it's high time. I would hope the federal government would do that. But of course, I don't. What about I don't serve there anymore. Uh, <laughs> what what about the crimes in the school? Is that increased many fold? It has. Mm -hmm. it does. I mean I Why, only know no control, I, look, law and look, order in the school. You schools. know what? I I only know what I see in the news and what I hear when I talk to some of my colleagues that are trustees at the school boards and and others. Um, they are telling me that uh, violence in schools is on the rise. On the rise. Great rise. Um, not something I have jurisdiction over as a city councillor. Obviously, that's the school boards. Maybe invite mm -hmm. someone from the school board to come in and, and, uh, and in speak a to future the, yeah, show definitely. and have them talk about it. And I think they are struggling with it, too. I mean, they want to make sure schools are open and accessible to all students. They, they Everybody wants schools to be safe. Definitely. But I think we've got a challenge. I think schools have become uh, more uh, of a, a place um, of violence a, 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 and other activities that are happening. Um, I hope we can fix it. I hope the our new our public uh, school board um, they've just been taken off the, the um, uh, supervisor mm -hmm. um, that the minister of education put mm -hmm. in. They're on their own now. They can do their own thing. And the, take ca a decision. the Catholic board in, in Mississauga, the Peel region has been on its own for forever. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Peel district board now is back where the trustees can start to make some of these decisions. And, and I hope they'll look at these issues closely and try and come up with things that make mm -hmm. sense. When I talk to the police, they tell me that they would be happy to be invited back mm -hmm. into the schools mm -hmm. when the Peel District School Board decided you but know, are, are not to have it. Lots But again, kids are that's an issue between the school, school board and, that, the, and the, the police. Police and the Nothing parents. Nothing to do with you know, me as a city councilor. But, but I, I can tell you from the feedback I've had from residents I've talked to and parents I've talked to um, that live in Ward 11, 
um, they think there's a role for the police to play to be, the school to be back in the high school. High school, at least, and even middle school. The conditions are very bad in middle school. That could be too. So, Brad, over last month we were really looking forward of having the town hall meeting of the federal, provincial, and the city, yeah. which was cancelled due because to the snow weather, storm. snowstorm. Yeah. So, I hope that meeting is rescheduled soon. Yeah, me you will too. also take an initiative because we all want to come and participate yeah, heavily in, the, in that me meeting too. and ask the concerned three tires of our government yep. and one platform. And we're all there in one room. And all in one room. You and know, I agree with that. I, so, I think it's great. I, I give uh, MPP Nina Tangri credit. She reached out to to me, the couple of other counselors, counselor, yeah. MP Richie Valdez, and, she, and, and they yeah. scheduled kind of an open forum to have all three levels all of government. All three levels. The that is the best I think way. that's excellent. To do. Yeah. Because if you walk in the room and your concern is, you know, my Richard, sidewalk yeah. is not fixed, or you know, my uncle can't get in the country, at least you've got those levels of government in that's the right. same, room. same room. We can point you, you to the right person sure. that you need to deal with. So I, I'm hoping it's going to get rescheduled. Now, as you say, MPP Tangri so just push was the one that, gate, well, yeah. that, that she put it together originally. We're waiting uh, for her office, and I know they will. They'll set they will it up soon again. because people are waiting. They are Win asking. Winter, <laughs> winter's winter in Canada. That is true, but still, it has not been announced because that was announced get very they're soon. Working. We will be giving. They're a date. working. They're working. Right. The provincial legislature just came back, and they've yeah, they just do, opened yesterday. I'm, I'm sure it'll happen in 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 April. April probably, I would think thing. it probably okay. happened. Go ahead. Brad, you had me um, recently um, just mentioned about the affordable housing. And as you're aware that, just like in many other cities in the GTHA, we here in Mississauga are also facing um, housing problems as many cannot get houses for rent at affordable prices. Um, is the city considering any action in this regard to solve the housing crisis? Here and in affordable bra housing. Yeah, well, projects. I mean, there's affordable, there's attainable, there's all kinds of words that people use. But let me tell you what we're trying to do with the city. We actually just had a report. Uh, at our council meeting this week uh, on a new bold, what I would call a new bold housing strategy mm -hmm. based on um, Bill 23, which is the new housing, housing policy uh, uh, bo bill Bunch. that the provincial government brought in. And municipalities have to adapt to that. And Mississauga, I'm proud of Mississauga because we didn't just say, well, forget it, the province is forced. We actually proactively looked at these issues and said, what can we do? So on affordable housing, what can you do? Well, obviously, you got to get housing built faster. faster. Yeah. You know, you, you and, and and you have to find ways to work with builder developers to see if they can do certain types of units in buildings or housing that is more affordable. Right. So we have to work with them, right? Absolutely. Miss Valleys don't build houses. Like we don't right. build houses. You don't build houses, but you actually yeah. build houses. Builders build houses. Build yeah. Yeah. But our job is to make sure that we streamline and find a way to get these things approved quicker so people can 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 build them quicker. At the Region Appeal Council meeting I was at this week, uh, I actually raised one of the things that I think we've not done well, mm -hmm. which is people living in rental housing where the portion of their income compared to the rent they're paying is mm -hmm. very, very high. Mm -hmm. They're already living in secure, generally decent housing. They like where they live, mm -hmm. but they have an affordability crisis. Mm -hmm. Why are we not just subsidizing more of those folks to mm -hmm. keep living where they're living? We don't have to move them. Move them yeah. We don't have all that cost. Like, why don't we just let them live? They want to live in Streetsville. Let them let keep them live living in Streetsville. In Streetsville. Yeah, for right. centuries they'll and stay. we'll give them a $300 a month subsidy mm -hmm. to help bump them from their income to the rent level so that their family income is, 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 very, is yeah. within line. So, and actually yeah. I'll, I'll give our housing staff credit at, at, at the region uh, when I talked to them about this and they said, you know, counselor, that's exactly what we need to do more of, right? right? It's not about moving people. And it's about keeping too. affordability. Keeping affordability. Absolutely. Right. But it's about keeping housing affordable for people because it's not just about you moving into a new house new house yeah no, that's right. how do we keep your existing housing exactly. affordable so we have a lot more of that to do 
But at the end of the day, I mean, the way housing generally works is it's the market, it's the market. right? And mm -hmm. whether it's resale, whether it's resale housing yeah. or building brand new, yeah. it's it's always going to be a challenge. That's right. But it's the old old demand from seniors and the veterans for Mississauga Council yep. that yeah, yeah. they should freeze at least the property taxes for veterans and seniors who have stayed in the houses for more than 20 years. Yeah. So, but they are, well, it's they an interesting concept. Rejected. Aspie, I get asked this all the time. I also get asked why are seniors, Lots of seniors, why are seniors paying education taxes? Well, the, the provincial legislation is why. The province doesn't allow us to pick and choose people on their age as to what property taxes you're going to pay. But I've heard from many people. I mean, their kids are grown up, long gone. Why are they paying education taxes um, and other taxes that, you know, well... You know what? That's it's sort of just not the way our system works. Mm -hmm. We all, right. we all pay. Yeah, we, we all contribute, contribute for a better society, right a better community. Yeah. Um, I mean, why are why are some of us paying way higher property yeah. taxes, or, or 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 sorry, or income taxes, or or HST, GST, whatever? Well, you know, governments do have to tax people. We have we have to pay for stuff um, mm -hmm. that we hope benefits the wider uh, community. But the property tax thing has always been a problem. One of the things I advocated for even before I was an MP, and I advocated it again when I was an MP, but I didn't get anywhere, was I think the federal and provincial governments should give one percent of the HST mm -hmm. to municipalities. Municipality. Oh, for sure. In the United States, many states get a portion of sales taxes mm -hmm. to help support cities cities and towns and villages and Pretty whatever healthy. in mississauga sorry in, in canada zero wow. you get no wow. Wow. sales tax and you get no income tax mm -hmm. to support so all we have is property tax if you want to keep a lid on property tax the senior levels of government should step up and say we're going to give municipalities a piece of the income, well, I, income tax. tax is more complicated, but sales, sales tax, tax for sure. Yeah. The one thing we do get from the federal and provincial governments, and I'll give them credit for this, and it started many, many years ago, is we actually get gas tax money. Mm -hmm. So we oh. get 2% of the gas tax, or sorry, two cents a liter of the gas tax from okay. the federal oh. and provincial governments, mm -hmm. which helps us pay for roads and transit and mm -hmm. transport. And that's, we're, we're grateful. I mean, it, it, it's great. It's another source of revenue, sure, revenue. for municipalities. Yes. But we cannot keep supporting the services that municipalities have to provide solely on property tax. Uh, Brad, due to paucity of time, I think I will have to again invite you, give you a trouble of Anytime. coming back. Anytime. Because we hardly mm -hmm. could cover any major questions today. Anytime. Would you like to give a concluding remarks to our viewers for us and well, just to for say the people thank of Mississauga? Well, Aspie, Cindy, just to say thank you for inviting me. This has been uh, a lot of fun. It's been great to talk about some important issues that I think we're facing uh, locally in our province and in our country. So again, thank you. And if any of your viewers uh, live in Ward 11, they want to reach out to me in my office, please uh, do so. We, we are here to serve. And uh, yes, please invite me back another time. I will definitely I, have I, to I, invite I'd you. Be delighted. We couldn't talk be about to all the questions. We could not thank correct. You. But no. the thing is, you, they will be having a live show after this show. So they are giving they're, me a red light they're, already. They're, yeah, they're kicking us out. I, I understand. Yeah, we have to I used shot. to do a TV show on Rogers. I know, I know. You are a media I know person. how it works. I know how it works. works. So with that note, we'll be ending our this week's episode with our Honorable Brad Butt, your host, Aspandi Wadiwala and Cindy Young. Thank will you be taking much. leave. We'll be seeing you next week again with a brand new show and the new guest. With that note, we say goodbye, good night, adios, God bless Canada. Good God bless Canada. Good night.